So we're going to carry on taking a look at the bivariate data product and some of the extra bits of detail that you can put in. And in this video, we're going to take a look at what's called residuals. So if we pop back over to NZ Grapher, we've got our data here um, put into NZ Grapher as you've seen before. Now you can do something called looking at the residuals of um, the model. So on your uh, graph type options there, if you click on residuals plot, then we get the residuals graph. Now this graph is showing us the um, where the data points end up on the graph, where the um, response variable is put along the bottom, and then how much it differs from the line of best fit. Um, that regression line uh, is the, the zero line. So I'm just gonna bring that over here so we can mark it up a little bit and know what we're talking about. So this zero line here that we're talking about, that is the model, the curve or the line or whatever it is that you fitted. So on this one in particular, um, it's doing it against the linear uh, regression line. So in this case, it's as if we had applied just one linear um, line of best fit, the regression line, over all of our data. We haven't split it up into the separate sections like you've seen in the previous videos. This is just to show you residuals across the whole set of the data. Now, next um, is thinking about what the axes are showing us. So the default uh, label on the x-axis is fitted, and this is referring to the response variable which means it what it, it's what was on the y-axis of the original graph. Um, so in this uh, particular instance, it's the price. And then the residuals that we have on the y-axis, that's how much it differs uh, from the line that we've got. All right, one thing to notice about how these actually get plotted is that your fitted value is taken from the value that would be predicted from the regression line. So you'll notice, for example, we have some dots at zero just here. If we go and look up there, we've got some dots appearing at zero price, but we know that we didn't get any that were actually at a price of zero dollars. If we take a look back at, at the graph, what that's actually doing is it's saying, look at where the uh, regression line would have predicted a zero and see what's happening. And it's meaning that all of the data that we had where the progression line was predicting zero was actually a bit above the line. Now let's go and take a look back at the original graph to see that. And you'll see here where the line is predicting, if we carry that on a little bit um, down at the bottom end here, where that line would predict a zero, we've got all of these data points up here that are above the line. So our, regress our residuals graph is showing us that at the point where we would have predicted a zero, actually all of the data is coming out above the regression line. So what this helps us to do is analyze the fit of the data throughout the series of the graph. So through the, the range of the values that our um, line can predict for, we can see where it fits better than others. So for example, we can see that at the beginning, most of the dots are sitting there above uh, the regression line, then it dips to most of them going uh, below the line, and then it kind of picks back up again towards the end. We've got some that are really far from the line, and you could talk about those unusually high uh, values here, where the line would have predicted them much lower than what they actually came out to be. And if you pop back to um, NZ Grapher, you can click on this thing down here called Weighted Average. That gives you a line of the weighted averages through that data, and you can see roughly where it goes. And you'd want to include this graph into your project if you're going to talk about residuals. Um, now, if it follows a clear, distinct pattern, like this one is looking like it's um, it's uh, predicting too high at the, the ends and too low in the middle, then you might want to consider a different type of model, which we talked about in um, the other videos. If you have considered a different type of model, if you've gone piecewise, you could upload uh, those two separate bits of data separately and do re the residuals for both of those. If you've gone for um, using all of the data, but a different type of line, so maybe a curve, then you can change the regression type down here from that linear to whatever model it is that you've chosen to do instead. And you can analyze the residuals from that and see if it's any better. 
And finally, what you want to do with your residuals graph is take a look at the prediction that you made and see um, what it tells you about your confidence in that prediction. So for example, if we took a carrot size of 0.4 um, from the simple linear regression line, we would predict that price to be around about 1,670. Now, if we look at the region of the price of 1,670, and remember the prediction is what's down here on the um, x-axis on our residuals graph. If we take a look at what's happening at the graph at that point, so we would get predicted that's our predicted value there of, of 1,670 if our data was um, exactly on the residuals line that we expect it to be. But what's actually happening at that point there is that most of the data is sitting below that line. In fact, all of the data is below the line at the 1,670. So we can write a statement about that. Because the data is below what's actually being predicted at that range, our prediction is probably an overestimate. And you could give a value of how much you expect it to vary between as well. So we can see those dots vary by up to about 800 below the line. Um, so our prediction is probably an overestimate and the real price could come out to be um, anything 800 below that. Um, another way you could use this is talking about the uh, confidence in your prediction. So if we picked something that was um, sitting fairly in, in the middle of the data, so for example, say we'd come out with a prediction of a price that came to just over $6,000, maybe somewhere up here, then that is sitting quite nicely in between the main bulk of the data. It's fairly central. Um, it might be a slight underestimate because it's towards the, um, just underneath the halfway point of all of that data. But also the range of that data is quite wide. So we wouldn't be as confident in that prediction. It could vary by up to, now this one at the top is about 2000 above. And this one here is looking to be around about 900 below. Um, so then we've got quite a significant gap in uh, what that price range could be. So we can make that prediction of about 6,200 say, but it might go up as far as 8,200 or down to 5,300. So there's a few different things you can do with your residuals graphs to give you some ideas of how to build some extras into your project.